Okay, uh, so hello everyone. My name is Caroline Go. I'm the Lipid Maps web developer, and I'm going to present you Biopan. That is a web based tool to explore mammalian metabolic pathways, and that is available on the Lipid Maps website. Um, I will start with presenting you Biopan, the method, and the workflow. And then Andrea Lopez, head of lipidomics facility at the Babraham Institute, will show you a real case study and how interpret Biopan results. So Biopan was developed on the conceptual idea of Professor Michael Wecklam to automate the exploration of systematic changes in lipid pathways. He also developed the database of reactions that is used by Biopan. And Michael wanted to create a free software that is available for everyone. And today Biopan is an open access web-based tool that is available on the Lipid Maps website at this address. So um, in recent years, great advances have been made in our ability to experimentally determine the elemental composition um, to identify and quantify lipid levels in biological samples. So here, for example, uh, you can see a figure of triacylglycerides molecular species obtained by chromatography coupled with mass spectrometry. And these technologies associated with bioinformatic pipelines make possible to simultaneously monitor the dynamic changes in hundreds of lipid molecular species. And uh, we also have information on how to integrate lipid substrates and products catalyzed by enzymes. Here, for example, is shown the de novo lipogenesis pathway where reactions um, are not isolated, they are linked and catalyzed by enzymes. So any changes uh, does not happen in isolation, but in the context of biosynthetic pathway. You could have the total number um, of lipid levels as shown in this figure, where TG total levels are significantly different between the aged and young conditions. And we know from the de novo lipogenesis pathway uh, that TG is produced by DG and vice versa, and these reactions are catalyzed by enzymes. However, if we look at the de novo lipogenesis pathway, these reactions are not isolated, but they are surrounded by other reactions. So if we want to interpret these changes in the context of pathways, we also need to look at all these reactions that are around and understand how these other reactions can impact reactions between TG and TG. And this is an example of many changes between uh, the experimental young and age conditions. So manual interpretations of complex set of changes with it, the lipidome become very challenging. So um, we need a bioinformatic tool, Biopan, that will automatically rank and highlight the strongest relationships between lipid substrates and products catalyzed by enzymes over two conditions. And to do that, from a quantitative data set, Biopan uh, will put a value um, on the activity of two conditions of each individual reaction. So uh, a number on the reaction TG to PC, PC to LPC, LPC to LPA, et cetera. And for some collection of reactions, so for some pathways, Biopan will put a numeric value on the activity of the sets of reaction. So now if we focus on the method, Biopan calculates statistical scores for all possible lipid pathways to predict which ones have changed in the samples um, of interest relative to the control conditions. So the main idea is to compute a value for each reaction pathway and those with higher scores will be classified as active and those with lower score will be classified as suppressed. If we illustrate this with this example of data sets, we can say that the disease condition corresponds to our condition of interest. And here is the control condition. If we only look at these three lipids, Biopan will identify two reactions, PC364 to PA364 and PA364 to PI364. And Biopan starts with the transformation of the data sets. Each quantitative data is divided by the sum of the values in the sample. So for example, 
this value is divided by all the values in the disease one sample, giving us this value. And this principle is applied to the whole file. After that, uh, Biopan calculates a score for each reaction. Um, it starts with the calculation of a weight vector for the two conditions where each weight corresponds to a ratio of product over substrate. If we apply it to the PC to PA reaction, each weight corresponds to PA values, so products, divided by the PC values, the substrate. So the vector for the disease condition contains four weights corresponding to the four conditions, four samples, with um, the product values divided by the substrate values. And likewise for the control vector, PA values on the nominator and PC values on the denominator. So we obtain two weight vectors containing these values and the reaction's weight indicates the shift to our more products or substrates in disease that control samples and can be used to predict whether a particular reaction is active or not. So then uh, from the weights, we want to see if that specific reaction is interesting. So if the values in the disease samples are consistently higher than the values in the control samples, as it means that the reaction is being activated. To do that, a t-test between disease and control replicates is performed using the weights to generate the p-values. So these four values against these four values. The alternative hypothesis is that the mean in disease is greater than control. So a low p-value indicates that the values in the disease condition are higher and consistently higher. And finally, the p-value is converted into a z-score z-i. So the PC to PA reaction is associated with that z-score. And this transformation is done uh, to put values on a scale that is easier to work when uh, we come to the next step, which is the computation of pathway scores. So here we have a value that indicates an increment of that reaction between the two conditions. And by doing the same thing, we have another value for this reaction, PA364 to PI364. And as we can see in the diagram, these reactions do not happen in isolation. So when Biopan has finished calculating scores for each reaction, it looks at the pathways. And a pathway which we will consider to be interesting overall will be one where we have um, an overall positive set of values across the pathway as a whole. Um, and the way we then collapse these individual values into an overall value is this formula here. So um, a pathway are a combination of individual reactions. So ZA corresponding to the Z score of the pathway here, A, this one in our case, is a combination of the ZI involved in the pathway. And finally, uh, we put a cutoff on the ranked Z scores to filter for the reactions pathways we consider interesting. Any value above the threshold in the positive or negative is going to be interesting because it means that the reactions are activated or suppressed. Here, uh, the ranked reactions and pathways are highlighted in green are those that might be interesting because the Z-score is above the threshold, which means that they are most active in the disease condition than the control condition. And the reactions in red might be interesting because of the negative Z-score. Uh, these reactions are suppressed as they are less active um, in the disease than the control samples. And the one in the middle with low values from the threshold do not show a trend. So highlighted reactions in green or red are ranked in biopan and, and could highlight the interesting reaction results in the set of data analyzed. And the threshold that is applied here can be changed in the final interface, um, as I will show you later. So. Uh, 
Now, if we look at Biopan workflow, Biopan requires a lipidomic data set containing quantitative data uh, in CSV formats. Uh, this data set must contain at least two conditions and with a minimum of two replicates per conditions, but we highly recommend using at least three replicates per condition. The first row should include the conditions uh, and the first column, the lipids. And today, Biopan is fully integrated with lipid links, which was introduced earlier today by me, allowing the user to upload data sets from different naming conventions and level of structural information. So, um, for example, lipid links recognizes all these lipids with different subclasses names, so DG or DAG, levels with acyl chain composition, some composition, double bond position, with or without brackets and it converts them to the nomenclature and the level of resolution required by Biopan. So the user can use Biopan with datasets descripting lipids with known nomenclatures and different levels of resolution. When your file is ready, uh, you can choose and load it. And it is also possible uh, to try Biopan using one of two available demonstration files. So after loading the file and when lipids are in Biopan's nomenclature, Biopan constructs possible reactions based on, on a manually created database. This database currently contains 96 reactions identified in mammals. Um, so we have four biosynthetic pathways that are covered. So de novo lipogenesis, the sphingolipids, plasmalogen and heather lipids, and the fatty acids. These reactions covered 42 lipid subclasses uh, that can have hundreds of molecular species. So for example, in the study case we will show you later, each category is represented in these quantities uh, with um, a total of 608 lipids. Uh, that will be analyzed by Biopan. Currently, um, oxidized lipids and sphingolipids with the backbones that have 82 sphingoid base, or the base these like 16.2, 14.2, and 71 are not yet recognized by Biopan. Uh, this is a further development we are considering for Biopan. So about reactions, there are two types of lipid reactions the reactions requiring a fatty acid CoA or a fatty acid, and the ones that do not. In both cases, uh, the same composition, so the total number of carbons and dumbbell bonds must be equal on each side of the reaction. And if your input data set does not contain any fatty acid CoA or fatty acid, Biopan won't be able to build these reactions. So if you, we look at an example with li these lipids, Biopan will build these two reactions that respect the record sum composition rules as the number of carbons and double bonds is equal on each side of the reaction. So here we have 40 plus 18 equal 58 and six plus two equal eight. The same composition is equal on each side of the reaction. And based on these reactions, Biopan classifies each lipid molecular species as either unrecognized, processed, or unprocessed. So unprocessed molecular species are lipids whose subclasses are not included into Biopan database. So for example, for the moment, Biopan does not recognize alkyl monosylglycerols. The processed molecular species category contains all lipids involved in at least one reaction. And the last uh, category, that is the unprocessed molecular species, corresponds to lipids which are recognized by Biopan, but are not involved in any reactions. So it means that Biopan haven't been able to build any reaction with these lipids as a substrate or products following the rules previously explained. So, if we go back to our previous example, and if this time the molecular species this DG does not exist in our data set, the reaction DG36 to PA36 cannot be built. So the PA uh, molecular species here 
is classified as unprocessed. And it is possible to display the list of unrecognized processed and processed molecular species by clicking on the associating number. A mapping between the data set nomenclature and the nomenclature used by Biopan is also available in this summary. So the last step is to assign a condition to each sample. So to be automatically detected at the same condition, the samples must have the same prefix. So here, the name of the sample starting with young is automatically associated with the young condition and the one starting with aged with the edge condition. If the condition's name do not suit you, it is possible to update them in the text boxes. And if you try to insert a dataset with a unique condition or a dataset with a condition that contains less than two replicates, it won't be possible to run by open. So you won't be able to click on the assign condition button. After assigning conditions, uh, you are directed to the result page. So the password browser uh, consists of several components. At the top, you can find a link to the Lipin Maps home page. Uh, on the left, you have the menu bar. The result tables are at the bottom. And at the center of the screen is a viewport that displays the passwords. At the top right of the viewport, you have the button to export the results and to check the documentation. So now I'm going to show briefly how to choose the type of analysis to perform. And then Andrea will present your real case duly. So um, through the pathway options box, you can choose the conditions for comparison. So define which condition corresponds to the condition of interest and which one is your control condition. The type menu um, allows you to visualize either the lipids or fatty acid pathways. The status menu is used to define which pathways you want to search using the calculation you have seen at the beginning of the presentation. You can choose uh, the active option to search the active pathways, which have changed in the samples of interest relative to the control samples. And by choosing the most active option, the most active pathways will be highlighted. So this will highlight only the pathway with the highest individual pathway value for the pathways containing reactions where substrate is a starting agent in the reaction. So it means that to choose the pathway that will be classified as the most active, Biopan looks at each step of the pathways and compares the individual reaction scores. And the one with the first highest intermediate values will have its pathways considered as the most active. So in this example, we have two pathways that Biopan classifies as active. The pathway that go from P to LPS and the ones that go from P to LPC. The first reaction is common to both pathways. So Biopan looks at the next reactions, which diverges. And as this value is greater than this value, it is this pathway that will be classified as the most active. So Biopan considers that this pathway might be more interesting than the other pathways that start with the P lipid. And in the same way, you can choose suppressed or most suppressed pathways to see um, suppressed pathways which have changed in the samples of interest relative to the control samples. You can also choose to have the nodes in the graph um, aggregated into lipid subclass, or you can view individual lipid molecular species. With a subset of lipid data menu, you can visualize all reactions using the reactions option, or you can choose to visualize known pathway from the literature using the pathways option. So for example, identify the Kennedy pathway, the biosynthesis of some lipids. And finally, in this box, there are two ways of filtering that are available. You can filter the pathway using one or two keywords by clicking on the plus button. 
And for search with several keywords, you can choose between the end and all logical operators. So by selecting the end operator, you can view lipids for which the name implies both queries. So for example, um, by searching for PC N340 on the lipid molecular species graph, you will have the lipids PC34 and OPC34 that will be displayed. And um, by choosing the OR operator, you can visualize lipids whose names includes one of the two searches. So by searching PCR340 on the lipid molecular species graph, you will visualize lipids which have in their name uh, PC or the cell chain 340. So for example, PC321, PC41, DG340, etc. And um, in the second way to filter, uh, you can use this tree that displays the lipids by category. So in the second box that is called pathway calculation, you can change the p-value to apply on the text box and specify the data are paired. So for example, if your disease and control samples come from the same animal, you need to specify that your data are paired. And uh, you need to click on the Calculate Pathways button to apply the changes in this box. Um, I'm now going to let Andrea talk to present you um, a study case. So I will uh, unshare my screen. Um. Sorry, I have some issues. Um, okay. Okay, Andrea, you can start. Thank you, Caroline. And, um, I'm going to present the, uh, some case study that uh, uh, Caroline has been discussing in the previously here, and also how we link uh, BioPan with uh, lipid links. So we decided to choose um, for a data in the case study, um, some data that was published in 2019 um, as an open access uh, results in metabolomics um, um, databases from this group in Japan, in Japan, from Ando, where basically they were doing some analysis of uh, a lot of lipid species. And we decided that this was kind of suited for BioPan for their studies because they presented data for the fatty acid coase, which um, um, Caroline had mentioned uh, early in this presentation that is uh, required as, um, as a tool to build up some of the reactions uh, from, from some of these uh, lipids, as, as she mentioned. We use this uh, uh, data because um, we, early this uh, uh, year, we um, uh, published this application note where basically uh, we try to explain how BioPan works and, and how BioPan um, help you out to build these relationships between the biosynthetic pathways. Um, and we uh, look into the data that they uh, put into the metabolomics workbench as a, an open access, and they have around um, 1,148 lipids and metabolites that they were identified in six replicates, so in different tissues. They were using brain, liver, muscle, adipose tissue from um, age and young um, mice. So we thought this is a, a really great um, lipidomics data set to try to see how BioPan is going to um, perform as well. So what um, you really need to uh, initially check is the notation of the lipids. So that's something that I'm going to start to, to uh, explain to you in a little bit more detail. So BioPan has been trying to incorporate some of the shorthand notation that appears in the lipid maps website. Not everything is at the moment as a, the shorthand notation that appears here. But we're doing our best to try to uh, combine these. Um, we check, for example, the ceramides 
and we see that in Bioplan, we um, assume that the user has their thermized with the sphingosine base 18-1. So anything that is reported only with the acid chain, Bioplan will take them. And there are some species like I have highlighted here, like the deoxyceramides and the deoxydehydroceramides, that they are not considered in Bioplan. They are not part of the reactions just yet, but it will be part of some of these um, and, um, for the development into the Bioplan. We also check some of the molecular species and some of the notations that appear here. So I want to draw your attention to the, the acylglycerols. Uh, in here, we have this AA. And uh, when we really look in more detail into the masses that the authors were reporting for this case study, we then uh, realized that they were talking about the, the acylglycerols um, uh, that comparing with the exact masses that are reported in the lipid maps website. We also look at into these species, which are the alkyl um, species, and uh, the, those are uh, comparing the masses. We look at is this was the ODG lipid, so DGO dash. Um, and uh, we also look into the dehydrosphingomyelins and all the, uh, all the other lipids. Um, and we started to uh, look into this uh, shorthand notation that um, Biopan was designed to take on. And when we made the decision to um, make it a public key available into the Lipid Maps website, we realized that as Ni was presenting early, not every one of us speak the same language. So we needed, um, uh, we started a collaboration with Maria and me to be able to, uh, when we put it on the on the Lipid Maps website, so everybody could access it. It is uh, um, pretty robust. It works with uh, um, a lot of uh, other people's uh, notations, but bear in mind that sometimes you encounter some of these notations that might not work, and then you just contact the developers and, and we will be able to help you out if there is something else that is not there. But check in the manual of an, that is on the website so you can see what is the notation that Biopan um, uses. So here is one of the examples that we have in terms of what Biopan takes as a, as a shorthand notation. And you can notice that uh, the data that is uh, displayed in this case is the areas of the uh, liver tissue young compared to the age. So one of the questions on the chat was about, can it take uh, areas or does it need to be quantitative or does it need to be normalized? It will take the data, but remember that um, every, every bioinformatics tool is uh, subjected to the quality of your data. So if you feed something, you, you will get the other thing that you have to do the interpretation. The only thing that Biopan doesn't take is the fall change because you really need to compare two conditions, your condition of uh, interest and your control condition. So if there is only one single set of data because you have already done the fall change, then Biopan is not able to compare those two conditions. So um, once you have this uh, sorted, let's say you tick this box about how your data it looks like and how your notation looks like. Then we can go into the uh, Lipid Maps website and we can then um, click into this uh, um, uh, tool here, Biopan software, and you get straight into the web page of the Biopan. And if you want to be absolutely sure that the, your, your notation is right, there is a link here to the Lipid links or you can start the analysis and lipid leaks is embedded within the code of Biopan, so either way will work. Then we can start the analysis, and by starting the analysis, Caroline already showed you, you choose the, the file that you want to open, and I have to clarify here that your file needs to be in the CSV format, otherwise Biopan won't take them, and you load the file. So, um, at this moment, we I can I need to clarify that this is uh, taking a bit of time because we're not running it directly into the website. But obviously, if the 200 of you try to um, go and use it right now, it might crash. So um, bear with us in 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 in, in this while the um, data uh, gets uploaded. So once it's uploaded, you're gonna have these uh, uh, results. So 
Caroline already uh, talked to you about what does it mean to have unrecognized and unprocessed species. I'm going to draw your attention to these 500, over 500 processed molecular species that came from those 1,100 um, set of data from the uh, publication. But I also want to notice, uh, making you aware that if you have duplicates in your data file, these uh, duplicates are going to be added. But you are the one who knows really where your data, so you really need to go and have a look of what is going on in terms of your data. So, and that is precisely what we did. So we went to uh, the, the data back again, and I'm gonna um, draw your attention to this retention time here that the um, authors are um, reporting. And you can see that it, they, they match the same mass and the difference between these two species that they are reporting is around 0.1 minute. So in here, we, although we didn't produce the data, we made the conscious decision of adding these two lipids and that's why Biopan add duplicates. But if you, you think that you have differences in the acyl chain composition and you don't want biopan to add them, then you have to remove them from your from the from the input file and maybe analyze it twice with the different compositions of the acyl chain. So this is something that is um is already considered here. Um, in this data, for example, the difference in 0.1 minute is uh, um, something that we consider being the same species. But again, I will uh, keep repeating that it depends on, on, on your own data. So please bear in mind that you need to look at your data. So one of the questions on the chat was about the number of uh, replicates. So in this example, we have the same number of replicates. We have done experiments when we have different numbers for the both conditions. So in this case, the young on the, and the age and biopan will work. So there must be some other issue in terms of the notation why the biopan doesn't work. But bear in mind that it also depends on your experimental design. So ideally, you want the same number of replicas to have a more consistent statistical analysis of your results. So biopan will take them again as any bioinformatics tool. Remember, you, you feed something, you get another thing. And also one thing to remember is that the Biopan is taking the names that you're giving them in the input file, but you can also change the names in here. So there is no limitation for what you can do in here or how many characters you can name your sample with. And then we go and assign these conditions. And again, we um, uh, ask you to be patient and wait for this uh, um, circle to turn around and give us the uh, final page into what we are going to discuss, how to change things according to what you have in your file and how to get the most of the data from Biopan and also the tables that are showing you the, the final result. That is what you really want uh, from Biopan. So you get really prompted into this screen where you have uh, initially drawn to the novel um, lipogenesis uh, here, the ones that I'm highlighting here, but you can also see partially some of the uh, sphingolipids pathway and some of the ether and plasmologen uh, lipids. Um, also, um, the green colors are uh, highlighting um, the active pathways that happen in this set of samples. You can click in the notes and you can see the name of the lipid that we're talking about instead of the, um, the short height notation. And you can click in there. I'm not going to click in this moment, but you can get directed to the actual lipid maths page with the um, number and LSD identification from the lipid maps website. You can also click on the arrow, and this uh, pathway that has been shown here is about the total lipid subclasses pathway. And this total lipid subclasses uh, pathway is involving, especially in that uh, um, uh, arrow that I just um, click, is between PE and LPE. And you can see in this, what are the lipids that Biopan is considering as a substrate and as a products for um, PE and LPE. 
And these are the lipids uh, from P that Biopan is not being considered for different reasons in this data set. And, and this is when we, we, um, we have to bear in mind, and everybody has to bear in mind their own data. What does it mean when you have uh, this kind of uh, species in here, 42.11 and 42.2, what is happening there? So you have to go and, and have a look at your data. You can close this pop-up window and I, there's another thing that I want to draw your attention about, and is this the control condition and the condition of interest. So my control condition obviously is not age. I want to compare the young. And actually, because um, this is repeated, basically, when I'm selecting this, I, it comes a pop-up window. Bear in mind that sometimes, depending on the browser that you're using, this pop-up window will come in different positions. So it doesn't mean that Biopan has crashed. It's because the window is maybe hidden somewhere. Uh, it's nothing to do with Biopan. It has to do with the browser that you're using. And then I'm going to select my condition of interest as age. And you can see now that these um, things has uh, really changed in terms of what is being displayed. Now I really compare it the young against the age. So one of the questions in the chat is what do you need? Can you compare more conditions? Unfortunately, yes and no. So it is for two conditions because you want to see the changes in what happens when you do a knockout or when you compare the young against the age. And you can load your file with many different conditions. So you have just one control and many mutations. You can do that. And in here, you can start to select the different mutations that you might have. But at the end of the day, Biopan will only compare these two. Um, other thing that you can have a look in here is not just uh, the lipid subclasses, but you can look at the fatty acids. And this is how it looks like uh, the first uh, screen of the fatty acids. I will show you later how we organize this to have a more uh, clear picture of how these uh, um, elongations and desaturations happens in the fatty acids. The other thing that I want to point out your attention is about these um, uh, lipid molecular species. So we can see based on what the information is being stored in the file, how many molecular species this file has. And this is a bit co complicated and complex to just have a, a, a look by eye and trying to elucidate it. So Caroline has designed this filter box in the Biopan. So if I um, select the 30A4 uh, a molecular species, for example, and I do a search, I can see that um, my uh, Biopan is actually drawing the um, the novo lipogenesis with the lipids that have uh, the lipid subclasses that have the 30A4 um, molecular species. And you can see now that I am moving the, the picture and I rearrange it in different positions. You can also see that we have a, a, a single lipid here that is uh, in the ether lipids, but it's not connected. Uh, so it doesn't have any other um, reactants or, or any of the substrates that are being connected to in this uh, ether pathway. And you can also minimize this uh, using this uh, um, uh, tool in here on the screen. Caroline also mentioned that you can export the data with this button, so you can actually have uh, exporting the graph uh, in different formats, and you can export the results. I'm going to show you what are the results that you get with this. Is you um, the other thing that Caroline mentioned is about this set threshold that was one of the questions in the chat. So you can change the threshold here the, um, to a, a p value of uh, 0 0.05, p value of 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.005. 0 0.005 depends on what you want. And you then click here, calculate pathways. So the last thing um, very briefly that I want to talk to you is about this table. So I'm dragging this table here, which is uh, what it is uh, interesting about biopanels is that these, uh, these uh, um, tables are the predicted genes that activate or suppress some of the enzymes that catalyze the reactions between the substrate and products of the lipids. So um, I can reorganize this figure and I'm gonna show you in, um, in the, the PowerPoint presentation that uh, you can organize this um, in this way. So 
I want to draw your attention to the fatty acids that I showed you before, where you can organize them in the, in the um, here we organize them upwards to um, have a look at the elongation of the fatty acids. And in the horizontal direction, we organize them in the way that you can see the desaturations. And then finally, you can see that when it's highlighted in green, this is an active pathway between the 18-3 free fatty acid and the uh, product fatty acid 20 and 3 double bonds. And this um, reaction is catalyzed by the ELO5 and ELO7 enzymes. Remember, the enzymes are site specific. So depending on the tissue, you need to check whether or not we have you have the ELO5 or the ELO7. And now we have here the LF2, which catalyzes the reaction between the 24-5 to elongate it, the fatty acids to be the 24 and 5. And it happens exactly the same with the, lobo, the novo lipogenesis, and, and that's what is being discussed in this application note, if you want to have more information about. And um, these, uh, these uh, tables, which is at the end, what you want from um, Biopan is uh, um, the predicted genes that activate uh, or suppress these enzymes. And is, in this example, the lipidomic data, um, the Biopan uh, highlighted uh, human species genes. And uh, the example that we use here is mice. So you have to bear in mind that although most uh, often human and mouse genes are the same, there can be subtle differences between the species. So you can also click on the um, on the uh, name of the ends, uh, the gene here, and you will be transported to the uh, Lipid Maps website, and uh, you can then check whether or not the, the list of uh, species uh, they are there in in the Lipid Maps website. Um, and with that, uh, we then notice that this prediction of these different pathways that are um, given by Biopan is giving you more information that it was already published, uh, the, the deoxysphingolipids and the ether linked diacylglycerols. And then we found elongation uh, of the fatty acids. and We found changes in the de novo lipogenesis pathway. So it's a way that Biopan can uh, contribute towards this uh, um, understanding of the more uh, deeper biology uh, of what is um, occurring in your samples. And with that, I want to uh, acknowledge the people behind the scenes, uh, um, Simon Andrews at the Bioinformatics Facility here at the Abraham Institute, and in particular, our mentor and, and uh, um, developer of this idea of the Biopan, Michael Wakelam. The people behind the scenes in Lipid Maps, Robert Andrews, Matthew, Eo, and Geoff, and Caroline. And obviously, uh, the people at the front, which is Valerie, and Ed, and Bill, and Shankar and uh, our collaborators um, at the University of Leipzig, Maria Federova, and need for their um, brilliant tool to connect Biopan and make it accessible to everyone. And we'll be happy to take any questions.